So continuing our presentations today, we have Severio Conti with his presentation, Improving Online Caregiving Training for ALS and Complex Fragile Patients Using Design Build in Italy. So we'll see a, a short video um, from Silvio. Thank you. Hello, welcome to our presentation, Improving Online Caregiver Training for ALS and Complex Fragile Patients Using Design Build in Italy. My name is Silvario Conte, I'm the Head of International Relations of Associazione Consolancio Onlus, and today I'll be sharing highlights of our work on behalf of colleagues Andrea Zicchieri, Nicoletta De Rossi, Angela Desiderato, Silvia Pozzi, Fabiola De Marchi, Paola Contessa, Richard Bedlack, Julio Ayala, and Ilaria Giro. As we navigate through today's presentation, we'll be in the good company of Artemisia to our right. She's the official Consolancio ALS Awareness by Sea Vessel and can be found anywhere along the Italian coastline during the year. We'll start with the history of Consolancio and what we do. Then we'll delve into today's presentation about uh, access to ALS patient caregiver training in Italy and how we are improving uh, accessibility uh, using design build. Then we'll look at some results before we conclude. Consancio was founded by Andrea Zicchieri after his diagnosis with ALS in 2013. Andrea was the first Italian to receive a Davarone after it was approved in Japan in 2015. We are a patient-led, all-volunteer Italian ALS association. Uh, Andrea uh, led a successful advocacy of a Davarone approval in Italy which came to be in July 2017. However, uh, since last summer 2020, it is no longer authorized. Among many unique facets, we are the first Italian ALS association with an office established abroad in Boston, Massachusetts uh, since 2017. The purpose of this is to not only develop new initiatives to help the Italian community, but also to reinforce the global effort to end ALS. And because of this, uh, we're able to respond to most inquiries in less than 24 hours. We have two primary lines of, of intervention. The first is to improve the standards of quality care and assistance to all patients uh, uh, nationwide. And, and today we'll, we'll focus a, a bit of on this uh, through our caregiver uh, training course. And we also engage with the scientific community to develop new therapies while informing the Italian community of the latest research news uh, happening worldwide. So access to ALS and complex fragile uh, patient caregiver training became further uh, challenging due to COVID-19. Uh, previous training was sporadic, costly and variable in Italy. About 80% of patients in the country are cared for at home and so the role of the caregiver is uh, absolutely critical. Um, it, it also became uh, even more challenging to find experienced caregivers uh, locally uh, since the pandemic began. And so to solve uh, this problem, uh, we implemented Design Build, which is a concept that we introduced to the ALS community at last year's Alliance meeting and MND symposium. And it's defined as a project delivery system in which a single organization oversees and completes a project from design to finish. So here we have a, a comparison timeline of our design build approach in comparison 
to an ordinary method that uh, most groups tend to follow uh, due to time constraints. Um, I'm only going to talk a little bit about the key features, but all are encouraged uh, to watch our presentation at last year's Alliance meeting available on the Alliance's YouTube channel, uh, which gives an in-depth uh, discussion on, on uh, design build. But from what we can see, uh, the ordinary method on the lower half of the schematic illustrates a longer process, uh, which uh, is more prone to risks and challenges, uh, which leads to, uh, you know, which impacts quality negatively and ends up being more costly. Um, in our approach, uh, the, the, the initiative begins from feedback that we receive from the ALS community in Italy. Then our multidisciplinary team comes together to begin engineering. Um, and, that, and then we begin the construction together. And, um, and then our team of patients, caregivers, and all personnel uh, do a rigorous quality control and so what this does is it allows us to uh, put forth uh, uh, high quality results at a, a lower fixed price um, while, uh, while saving time and this is essentially beneficial because it allows us to make adjustments on the fly instead of having to start over as uh, many end up having to do following a, the ordinary project uh, sequence um, and it allows us to begin new projects uh, as this happens and, um, and, a, and a critical benefit in addition is failure analysis it allows us to uh, prevent failures from happening before they become reality in the field and this is important in the ALS community especially where time, costs, and high quality results are critical va variables. So using Design Build, we launched Italy's first free online ALS caregiver training course. Uh, this was launched in January of this year. It's designed by our team to support all ALS personnel. The course is available 24-7 with technical support online. It covers 14 uh, essential themes in a video lecture format, uh, which focuses on uh, not only conceptual, but also practical demonstrations. It's user-friendly with all devices and is accessible anywhere worldwide. The sessions are self-paced and uh, allow easy uh, return access for users so they can uh, uh, stop and continue uh, as they wish. Uh, users also receive a course, uh, a certificate of course participation. So the objectives of the course are to inform the caregivers of the uh, processes that they have to manage at home. It also instructs them on the latest and best uh, care practices and guidelines. Um, and this allows them to become more familiar with the medical nomenclature, which allows them to communicate um, better with the medical team and it allows for better uh, intervention protocols to be implemented by the medical team um, and uh, all the while uh, ensuring uh, confidence in the caregiver uh, of what is happening uh, by a patient's bedside. Understanding what's happening by a patient's side allows for overall uh, better effective uh, care long term. Uh, the course also uh, teaches on how to effectively communicate with all involved and this helps the psychological aspect of, of, of being a caregiver. Um, and, and, and in addition, the course also is a channel of uh, communication between families and healthcare uh, professionals 
um, so that they can communicate uh, what they're experiencing uh, in the field to the association and that allows us to uh, develop new intervention protocols to help them, uh, which is very, very important. So here we have uh, early data uh, from uh, our first uh, set of users uh, over the first 10 months. Uh, we've uh, achieved uh, 136 users enrolled um, with 36 surveys received thus far. Uh, most users are uh, caregivers or, and uh, health care assistants, while we have also a significant percentage that represent other types of care personnel. Um, so if we, if we look to the map to our right, we see widespread distribution of users through Italy and Switzerland, which, which is tremendous. Um, uh, the, shade, the unshaded regions do not necessarily mean that there aren't any users from those regions. It just means we haven't received uh, any surveys yet from there but we hypothesize that it's only a, a short matter of time until uh, we do. So we are really excited about that. But the, the data showed that there's uh, really a widespread necessity of a caregiver course of, uh, of this kind uh, across all types of personnel. Um, and that's really a notable uh, observation. So here in this schematic, uh, it illustrates how most users are finding the course. 58% uh, discovered the course through Facebook, 18% through the internet, and we have a tie uh, with uh, friends and colleagues and with uh, any ALS association that they may have uh, discovered the course from. So. It shows where most people uh, resort to to find information. Um, and this is another interesting uh, observation that we've made from uh, the early data. And here's a sampling of screenshots from different slides uh, present in a course session. So here we have uh, uh, some samplings from the PEG and NG modules and artificial nutrition. So uh, we can see that there's a not only a conceptual aspects but also uh, you know a practical uh, uh, diagrams and illustrations to uh, further supplement understanding. Here we have data uh, showing user interest for each of the 14 course sessions. So artificial nutrition and alerts for enteral nutrition are, were deemed the most interesting by users uh, within 60 to 70 percent. Uh, effective communication was deemed the least interesting uh, at 40 percent. Uh, but most, uh, or all, uh, rather all uh, course sessions received at least 40% or greater interest. So it shows how uh, dynamic and useful this course is. 97% um, of users who uh, completed the survey recommended the course to others. The 3% who did not recommend the course Although uh, they found the content to be useful, they found it too difficult for their current uh, situation. So to summarize and conclude, the Consolancio Design Build approach has proven effective in improving access to online caregiver training for ALS patients in Italy. The early data showed widespread enrollment through uh, Italy and Switzerland and the necessity of such course among different care roles in Italy. Uh, and as we just saw, most users recommended the course to others. 
We will continue to develop new projects using Design Build in response to the feedback we receive uh, while expanding uh, course offerings and improving content uh, as we move forward. Uh, thanks to uh, uh, any uh, uh, comments uh, and, and requests from the field. We would like to give uh, a standing ovation to the extraordinary talented team of patients, caregivers, and volunteers worldwide who help us achieve our mission. We greatly appreciate their support. You are all cordially invited to visit our presentation uh, at the upcoming MND uh, symposium. Uh, we will have a poster uh, that has not, uh, the live uh, poster session has not yet been announced, but please continue to uh, visit the MND Symposium website often as we uh, draw closer. And of course, um, you, you can also find uh, the uh, presentation time of the poster uh, through Constantio's website and social media. We hope you can uh, join us. Grazie per la vostra gentile partecipazione. Thank you very much for your time today. Your questions and feedback are always welcome. And we look forward to uh, meeting you all throughout the Alliance meeting and uh, symposium uh, this year. Um, please take care. Ciao. Excellent, thank you, Severio. That's uh, that was a, uh, a fantastic uh, presentation. Um, so the, the, I noticed there's a question in the chat, but before I uh, before I ask that, I just want to get a sense about you know it's a great it's a great initiative, and and, um, and I think the concept of uh, of your design build and and I particularly like the the, the failure analysis that you incorporate to. Uh, uh, to prevent failure in the in the uh, in the field. So how do you actually work out uh, the parameters for, uh, for that, that failure analysis? Oh, well, thank you, David, uh, for, for moderating and for, for the question. Um, yes, the, the, that's uh, very important. Um, so engineering, a lot of times uh, that, that happens in the initial design process where we come together, we combine our uh, multidisciplinary uh, expertise and we begin to speculate where uh, a component can fail uh, in the field. And a, lo a, lo a lot comes from experience of, of all those involved. Uh, other aspects come from observations. Um, and then also from uh, just you know, you know, the potential risk assessment that goes into any design or construction aspect where we, um, you know, have to think about uh, to pre before it becomes reality. Hmm. Um, so that that's really the uh, a brief summary. <laughs> Good. Well, thank you. Um, a question from Kari is: uh, Is there a way to incorporate subtitles in other languages? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, thanks, uh, Kari. Um, yeah, I think it is possible to do so. It, it's really having the uh, you know the, the, the same uh, you know ex experience in in a respective language that uh, allows uh, the course content to be broadcasted in other languages, but certainly, certainly doable. Good. All right. Thank you. And just one quick question, because we are running out of time. Um, have yeah. you seen any re resistance from the caregivers towards the course? Um, well, I guess I, I would, the, the word resistance would need more definition. Um, mm -hmm. But no, it's uh, thus far it's well perceived um, because it's the first course of its kind, and the the data showed uh, an unmet need to uh, support the role of the caregiver. Um, mm -hmm. So we're getting a lot of feedback um, on how on what else to incorporate 
uh, into the content and that and we'll look forward to be doing that in the very near future. Good. All right. Well, thank you so much again, uh, Saverio, and, um, and and best of luck with that. And uh, and you've given a nice plug for the presentation at the Inter International Symposium. So um, hopefully people will tune in to, uh, to that. So thank you.